brothers and sisters out there, come on in, come on in. How you doing, Sister Flo Harvey Martin? I see your John Hancock down there. How you doing? Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sister, for this good content tonight. I was looking forward to talk to you all about this particular topic tonight. It was on my mind all last night and all throughout today. So I'm ready to put it out there. Come on in, come on in, come on in. I hope I don't have no technical difficulties because we got bad weather here where I'm at. So hold on, my brother. So I'm going to try to get through it very, very quick. And I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible. I hope that storm don't mess up this broadcast. Those of you that are coming in, go ahead and grab your bag of popcorn and soda. Go ahead and grab that popcorn and soda. Come on in. Have a seat. Come up close so you can get this good content tonight. Thank you, Sister Flo Harvey Martin, for that bag of popcorn and sodas. How you doing, Sister Karen? Come on in, brothers. Come on, sister. We going to roll into this particular topic tonight. And I hope I can get through it. Like I said, I hope that bad storm don't uh, come up again. We had a bad storm here where I'm at. And I hope that it doesn't mess up the broadcast, okay? But we're about to get into it now. How you doing, brothers? How you doing, sisters out there? For those of you that do not know me, my name, and this your first time watching, my name is Tony M. Toom, and I talk about relationships. I talk about relationship uh, of that between a man and a woman from a biblical standpoint. When I say a biblical standpoint, I strictly believe in that type of relationship, man and woman. God created the man first, and he had a unique relationship with the man. And also, he, he created the woman. Secondly, he had a unique relationship with the woman. He brought the man and the woman together. He represented the woman to the man. And when the man looked upon the woman, he said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, I should call a woman because she came from man. And that's strictly what I believe in. If you don't believe that, my brother, since you have a free will, you can believe whatever you choose to believe. I mean, but I encourage you to stay here and get your bag of popcorn and soda. We got plenty of it. Courtesy of, again, Sister Flo Harvey Martin. Go ahead and get it so we can uh, get into the show. Now, with that said, tonight's topic is why chase a person that doesn't want you while ignoring the person that wants you? Again, why chase the person that doesn't want you while ignoring a person that wants you? Now, with that said, let's talk about when it comes to a relationship. Well, a relationship is about bonding or coupling. If you uh, look at what coupling is, coupling, if you look at a train on a track, you got this little metal piece that uh, hold each cart together, and it's called a coupling. And it goes like this, it lock up and it holds right there, or we could say glue um, anything that holds things together, we'll talk about bonding. And now, my brother and sister, when it comes to a relationship, you want to bond with the right person. You do not want to waste your time. And when we talk about time, we're talking about your heart, my brother and sister. Speaking of the heart, when we look at in the dictionary, when we're going to we're going to talk about the heart, okay, when it's come to the relationship. The heart, my brother and sister, is defined as the central or intimate part of something. The heart is the spiritual part of us which our emotion and desires the will. Okay? That's what our heart is, okay? So it's where the emotions and the desires the will. Now, it's something that we need to know about the heart, my brother and sister, and you need to take this in. I want you to listen. Don't hear me. It's very vital, my brother and sister, that I'm going to lay the foundation that I'm about to put, pull the cement in, and we're about to build this little house, okay? Now, when it comes to your heart, my brother and sister, there's a book that King Solomon wrote in the Bible, and it's Proverbs. It's a whole bunch of wise singing. So, when it comes to the heart, my brother and sister, you got to be very strategic, and you got to guard your heart. But... When it comes to the heart, Proverbs 3, that's chapter 3, 5 through uh, 12, it states this. Listen carefully. Do not hear me now. It said, trust in God. 
from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Just that little part, that says a lot. Again, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure things out. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he's the one who keeps you on track. You understand? Don't try to figure things out. Listen to God's voice and he will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all, my brothers and sisters. Don't assume. Run to God. Run from evil. Your body will glow and you will be healthy. Your very bone will uh, vibrate with light. Honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. Your bones will burst. Your wine, vine will bring over. But don't, don't, dear friend, resent God. Discipline. Don't sunk when he, when he have love and correction for you. Okay? Now, some key thing when it comes to your heart. Love God with all your heart. Don't try to figure out everything. Listen to his voice. He will keep you on track and don't assume. Okay? Also, it is also written in Luke 10, 27. And Jesus said this. We're talking about the heart, okay? And Jesus said, he answered, love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength and all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. We're talking about the uh, love, okay? And also, one more thing is say, as it is written also in Proverbs 4.24, above all things, listen carefully, my brother and sister, above all things, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. That is a big warning. When it comes to this life, we're in a we're in a rough world, okay? And we're talking about relationship. And you need to be he you need to take heed to what I'm saying, my brother and sister. Proverbs 4.23, it says this above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flow from it. That's a warning in itself. And some of you saying, well, Tony, why are you telling us all this? I'm building. I'm talking about when it comes to a relationship and I'm building. I'm trying to tell you something, my brother and sister, so that you won't get hurt. Where you don't want to commit suicide, okay? Now, if a man or a woman remember this, he or she will not be devastated if the relationship doesn't work. You won't be devastated if you keep in mind what I have just told you, my brothers and sisters. You won't be devastated if the relationship go left field. Now, question. Have you ever, my brother and sister, you ain't got to raise your hand, but have you ever in your life, how you doing, Sister Deborah Scott, and how you doing, Sister Sherry, have you ever in your life ever chased a man or have you ever chased a woman? Be honest with yourself you don't have to raise your hand, but be honest with yourself. How did you feel and what did you think about yourself while you was doing this, when you was running after someone? Let me tell you this, my brother and sister. Most men and most women are chasing. And they're chasing and they're not chasing the right type of relationship. They're not chasing the serious, committed, and covenant relationship with a member of the opposite sex. So most men and most women are chasing someone. Most men and most women, that's right, Sister Sherry, most men and most women are seeking to use someone of the opposite sex without equally investing into the relationship. It's just like if you're investing in stocks or whatever, that's an example, or, or if you're sowing, you're sowing seeds, you're planting. But most men and most women, when it comes to this world, are looking for someone that he or she can use. You need to keep that in mind. So you have some men that chase after a woman when there is this one woman that really wants to be in a relationship with him. And then on the other hand, you could have a woman 
that is chasing after a man when there's this one particular man that wants to build a life with her. Now, let me y'all give you something that someone wise said a while back. And when I say wise, it's, it was my great-grandfather. My great-grandfather, his name is Eddie Lee Smith. He's deceased. He's been gone. But he left some valuable jewels and I'm going to uh, present these jewels to you and listen to what I'm about to say, my brother and sister, because this is very valuable when it comes to a relationship and running after people. This is what my uncle, my uh, great grandfather said. Oh, I hear the storm coming. I hope it don't knock me out. But listen very carefully. My great, my great grandfather, Eddie Lee Stewart, he's quoted as saying this, and I don't know where he was the originator of it, but this is one of his his uh saying per se okay he said this don't love the person don't love the person that you love love the person that love you i'm gonna say that two more times let that sink into your minds my brother and sister my great-grandfather said don't love the person that you love love the person that love you let it sink in a little bit now don't love the person that you love, love the person that love you. Now, when he was talking about love, this is what he actually mean when you break it down. The person that you love or you really into a lot of time, you mostly on the back end, you're chasing. You're chasing. And the person that really into you, you're overlooking that person. That person hope that you can see who he or she really is. But a lot of time, for whatever reason, you brothers are running after the wrong type of women. And let me tell you about the women that you're running after, my, my brother. Most of the time, though, women that you're running after, let me give you a, a little piece of wisdom. Most of the time, they're running after someone. Sister, let me tell you something. That man that wants to build a life with you, but you're looking at these other men or the particular man, more than likely he's running after another woman. In both scenarios, the people that you really want to be in your life, my brother and sister, if they're running after someone else, you're going to be last on the totem pole. You're going to be someone that they want to hook up with when they're bored and don't have anything to do. You're not going to be high on that person priority list. Brother, let me tell you this. And I need to tell you, sister, this too. Listen up. And this part of the game, okay? Brothers, listen to me carefully. You can't buy no woman's affection. A lot of you, brother, you're trying to buy a woman. You can't buy a woman. You can't buy a woman's uh, respect. You can't do that. You can't buy no woman to uh, nurture, nurture, nourish you. You can't do that. You, there's no way you can get no woman to nourish, respect you, or, or encourage you. For those of you that like to lead with your pocket, let me tell you, you can get a woman or women, but you, you will not get a woman that hard is there for you. That woman going to be there with you, or those women going to be there with you until you can't do no more. And this for a whole bunch of you brothers. You like flashing stuff that you have. You like your possession. But let me tell you something, brother. Your life does not uh, consist of your possession. Even Jesus said that. If a man thinks, just because you got the world possession and you're getting all this attention, you don't know whether a woman really wants you for who you are or what you have, more than likely, the old women going to want you for what you can do for them. And when you lose your resources, guess what's going to happen? A lot of these women are going to be gone. But there are this one woman, she's content with you, brother, because guess what? She look at you, she, she uh, wants you for who you are, not for what you have, even though you might have yourself together. Bump that she don't want, she, I mean, she would, she would like some of that, but it ain't all about that. It's about you, brother. You understand? It's about you, brother. So that's who she really wants. Some of you, brother, you if you if you lost a job or you lose your resources, the woman that you were running after, you notice that 
you call her and it goes straight to her phone. You text her, she don't respond, but while you was on your feet, she would quickly respond because you were doing something for her, right? But when you lost your job or you had a health problem, guess who was there for you? That woman that you weren't paying too much attention, she was there for you. You lost your job. This lady, she don't have to do it. She came and helped you. You got sick. She came and helped you. You was down. This woman came and helped you. And then a lot of you brothers, while you down, you will uh, make time for this particular woman that making time for you and helping you out. But once you get on your feet, guess what? You're going to you're gonna try to run back after that other woman that uh, didn't have no time for you or other women. You forget that particular woman. And, uh, and that's for those of you brothers that like to lead with your pockets. You're ignoring a possible good woman that God put right there in your face, but you couldn't see it. You prefer to run after a counterfeit. Now, on the other and then there's another situation or scenario. Some of you sisters, let me educate you on this. Some of you sisters, you're running after a particular guy. You're trying to hold your integrity up. You're trying to hold your reputation up. You're trying to hold on for a good man. But that is one particular good man. He wants to build a life with you. But no, you want a bad boy. You want the guy that got the, the, the black jacket on that riding a motorcycle, right? No disrespect to those of you that ride a motorcycle, but you get the, the picture when I'm saying you want the bad boy. You want the boy that seemed like he got a lot of excitement, right? But this guy, he's not interested in you that much. Because more than likely, he got other women running after him. Or he's running after somebody. He's riding his motorcycle trying to get somebody else to ride. And it's not you. But this other guy, he's there with you. He's there with you at all times. This other guy, this Mr. Fantastic guy, when you need something, when you down, you need something, this guy don't want nothing. As a matter of fact, he want your resources. He call you and get you to give him money and stuff. He call you to get all kinds of stuff. And let me tell you this, sister, some of you, not all of you, but some of you, you think by just giving your body to a man that's supposed to help. Now, this bad boy, he will uh, get a taste of your body. And after he get a taste of your body, it's not about you. He don't care nothing about you. Some of you women lead with opening your legs. Like some men lead with open their pockets, some of you women lead with open your legs. And that's why a lot of you are hurt. You're running after this guy. This particular guy, he don't want nothing to do with you. He won't take you nowhere. He won't, and the only time he call you is late at night. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. He, he has so many things to do. You want to make time for him, but this good guy, he want, he want to make time for you. He want to spend time for you, but you don't want that. Some of you, sister, not all of you, you will go out with this good guy, right? You will go out with this good guy, and you will use him, and he actually like you. You will use this man, right? And he just want to spend time with you. He want to treat you right, right? But this bad guy... He don't have nothing else to do or he's horny and he texts you while you're at a restaurant, right? And you get a smile on your face and he asks you what you're doing or what's up. And some of you sisters, you do this thing. You will order the man some food off this other man's dime and you would take it like it's your food. And you're going to take it home when the good guy drops you off and then when Mr. Excitement come, he's going to eat the, the food, what you manipulate this guy on. And then after he do that, he's going to put you on your back. He, you done fed him. And now he's going to get fed again. The dessert is going to be you. And after he get finished, he's going to get up and leave you. While you laying down, that good guy, he texting you telling you how he had a good time or he called you and you let it go to voicemail. You running after someone that don't want you. 
and you ignore the good person. Now, I'm going to break it down like that. Again, my brother and sister, the question is, have you ever chased a man or woman in your life? Not many men or women will actually admit or confess to others that he or she have ran out to someone of the opposite sex because that man or woman does not want to be viewed as being a fool. And you are a fool because other people know you're a fool because a lot of times you tend to talk. And people know people. And people know that you're being played. And sometimes, brother or sister, you'll bring up this nice man or woman. And you know what? What really pre perplexing? Have you all ever heard a woman say he too nice? He too nice. Oh, you want someone that got an edge, right? You want someone to knock you up, oops upside your head and cheat on you a lot with a whole bunch of women, just dog you out. Is that what you really asking for? Some of you, and then some of you are brothers. This woman over here, oh, she too, she she's a square. She's not doing that, but you want to date the woman that the whole neighborhood have had a taste of. You understand? That's how some of you brothers and some of you sisters do it. How you doing, mother? That's how some of you all do it. Now, when it comes to chasing, there are two categories of chasers. You have single chasers and you have married couple chasers. I'm going to break this down shortly. Now, we're going to talk about the single chasers. The single chasers are men and women. Guess what, brother and sister? If you are, that go to storm. I hope it don't knock me out. But some of you single brothers and sisters, that you are, you got a big advantage of a married couple. You know why you got a big advantage of a married couple? Because you could easily walk away than a married man or a married woman that's stuck in a relationship running after his or her spouse. Now, you single brother and you single sister. I have touched on this a little earlier, but let me tell you something. Some of you brothers, single brother, you're running after this single woman. You notice that most of the time, brother, you, you're doing everything. Am I okay, Sister Sherry? Say I'm freezing up. I hope I ain't freezing up no more. Am I still freezing up? You know, give me a yay or a nay. Cause right now I'm looking at myself on this monitor. I'm moving. I'm animating right now. Am I still freezing up? If I'm not free, you know, let me know something now. Don't let me keep talking and no one is not listening to me. But you single brother, let me tell you this. Have you ever noticed? How you doing, of course, Mary Jameson? Have you ever noticed, brother, that a lot of time this woman that you really running after, you notice that she doesn't get in contact with you until she wants something from you. You notice that you're doing most of the calling, brother. You notice that you're doing most of the texting. You notice that when you call her, it takes a long period of time for her to call you. She might call you another day or a few days. Have you noticed when you text her, we know everybody got a busy life, but you notice when you text her, she don't respond to you. But she responds quickly to you when you reach out to her. Have you ever noticed when you want to go see her, you ever notice that you always have to buy something to see her? She'll have you stopping by the store or doing something. You ever notice that? You notice that whenever you want to be with her, it always calls you. You always have to go to your pocket. Have you ever noticed that, brother? How do you, and you know it's coming. She And she's going to say, I want, I need for you to do this. She'll use that word. I need for you to do that. I want this. And you feel, and you know within yourself that you're being used. But you think that if you keep putting your resources and money and doing things for her, that you're going to win a heart. You can't win a good woman heart that way. Now, you could win uh, a Delilah. And we know about Delilah. Delilah was about the cheddar, right? Delilah sold uh, Samson out. What did Samson do? Samson was foolish. He was running after. He was chasing Delilah. Delilah didn't want him. Delilah wanted the cheddar. 
And that's what some of these women want. Majority of them, not all women, but majority of them, they want the cheddar. And some of you brothers, you giving it to them. And let me tell you something, too, before I talk about the sister. There are some men that won't give a woman out one penny and she give him more time than she gives you, brother. They won't take him nowhere. They won't do nothing. The only thing they'll do is come through their house and we know what that's about, right? How do you feel, brother? This woman don't even uh, contact you. How do you feel? I know I'm talking to some brothers right now. How do you feel being used? Some of you are being used right now. Some of you brothers, you go behind on your bills, giving the woman your money, paying her bills and stuff, and you're getting behind on your bill. You won't complain or nothing, but you, you're so strong guy. Some of you brothers, you could be on your job, and this woman knows she could call you at any time. She don't care whether you, you, you lose your job, and you tell her, them people on your jaw that you got to go. It's an emergency. And it don't be an emergency. You, she wants you to stop by Burger King or, or Wendy's or something to bring her something. And then you go back to work. Some of you brothers like that. And let me tell you what some of you other brothers do when you really being played. And listen to me carefully, sister. I'm just making an example. I'm just, just making an example. So don't take this wrong. Some of these women that you're running after, brother, they would say they're going on a girl trip, right? They're going on a girl trip. And you falling in the trip. You think you falling in the trip, right? You give her money and stuff. And guess what she might be doing? She's chasing somebody else, right? So she get with the bad boy, Rico. She get with Rico and she take Rico out of town on a cruise and stuff. On your dime. And you see her taking pictures on social media, but you don't. You just see her by herself, right? Guess who taking the picture? Rico taking her picture. Now you have paid for her cruise, and you have paid for Rico cruise, cause you gave her money. You you left the door open. You just gave it to you, and then not on that. She would even have you to cash app her some money and stuff, and she used you. That's how some of you brother, you running after the, and then the lady that's, that's right there by you, she's the one calling you, then she's the one texting you, trying to, to see how you doing, and do you need anything, but you ain't got time for that good woman. And guess what? When you come to your senses, you're going to start thinking about that good woman, but guess what? More than likely, Jody going to have her, and she, he's she's going to be gone. That's when you're going to think about her. You're going to think about that opportunity that you had with that woman, but she's gone. Some of you single sisters, this single man, they really like you. He been, he been doing a whole bunch of stuff for you, and you know it, but you still into this bad boy, and he's using you. He's using you and using you and using you. You do it, you drop everything for this man that don't care nothing about you. You haven't met, you haven't met none of his family members. You haven't met none of his friends. You don't know much about him. You ain't even got, you ain't never been to his house before or his apartment or his cave. It's off limits to you. You don't even know where this man stay at. He tell you stuff like he's the man, so it's his job to come see you. But he keep all kinds of th things from you. You ask the bad boy all these questions, he be very vague. Have some of you sister ever been down this road before? He be very vague. He don't want to tell you nothing. He keep you out of life. You want to take pictures with him. He won't take no pictures with you. Have you ever been that way before? Have you ever... Then he come over your house at night and he put you on your back. Now you he before he he does that. How you doing, Sister Hunter? Before he does that, this man he he be out with the boys and stuff. He tell you I'm gonna be out with the boys. He go to concerts, movies, all that kind of other thing with the 
with the young other ladies, right? But you, he don't do it. He come to you after everything is over, right? Those important are uh, anniversaries. You can have a church anniversary, all that kind of stuff. Our anniversary, special holiday stuff, he will not come around. He vanished. He ghosts on you. You know when he comes to your house and you give it to him and you think by you giving it to him, you think that when you give it to him and you know what I'm talking about, you on your back and you doing all those double monkey back flips and you think that's going to get him. So Tom says she'd have been there. So you, you do all those double monkey back flips, right? And he don't care about how you feel physically. It's all about him ejaculating in your vagina and he don't care how you feel. And once he does that, he ready to go. He's going to go to sleep or he's going to ask you is it something that you could fix him to eat or can you run and get him some? Some of these guys that some of you sisters be running after, not all of you, you got children, right? This man called you and you got small children and he tell you to come over to where he's at. Some of you sister, you will leave your children, small children in the house or apartment and run over to this man place just to give him some. And you got little children in your, your house. You leave your children because you that strong guy over this guy. And some of you would do this. You would tell the guy that's interested in you, you got an emergency. You might do that. We, I got an emergency. I need to run out. And you wake the good guy up and he come up to your house and you say, I got an ear in the wrong. That man, and he think, you know, he want to give you the benefit of the doubt, right? You get him to come over to your house at 12 o'clock because you got an emergency, right? He come on there and keep your children and you go over to Rico's house and let Rico blow your back out. That's what some of you sisters have done. I'm just talking facts. So, in both situations, you got to chase it. You got a man chasing a woman, and he don't care for you. Or you got a woman chasing a man, and she don't care for you. But single brothers and sisters, you got it easier when it comes to this situation. You know why? Because you are not in a covenant relationship with these people. You could walk away. And I always say, when you get into your feelings, go ahead and cry. You're going to either cry now or you're going to cry for years to come. That right, so she'll blow your back out. That's what's going to happen. You're going to you either cry now or you're going to cry later. Choose which way you want to hurt. You know why you got that way, my brothers, my single brothers? You know why you got that way, your single sister? This is why, because you did... You did not understand this. And what did I say? I'm going back to what I said. It says this. It say, you, you did not go to God for counseling. You did not pray. You didn't go to God. You know what you did? You did it your way. And this is what you should have done. Again, Proverbs 3, 5, 12. You should have, as the Bible said, God where it said, trust God from the bottom of your heart. No, you want to trust this no good man or this no good woman from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out anything on your own. You went on your own because you thought you were so smart, but you weren't wise. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. No, you wanted to listen to that no good man or that no good woman voice. He's the one who will keep you on track at meaning God. But you listen to the no good man and this no good woman that run you off the track and you hit a and you hit a pole. Don't assume that you know it all. You think you know it all. Some of your family members, some of your friends, even some of your co-workers, even so all the people on Facebook that Lord to give advice, they tell you when you when you put your business out there, they tell you, don't do that, don't do that. But you don't want to listen. So you get hit. Another thing, again, in Luke 10, 27, 
Jesus said this, and I re just rehearsing what I just said. And all this got to do with your heart, my brother and sister. Jesus said, love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and all your mind. So your priority was screwed up anyway. You don't suppose the Lord run after no man, sister. Brother, you don't suppose to run after no woman. Your first priority, your very first priority is the Lord. If your very first priority to the Lord, yes, you might run into somebody wrong because we do make bad decisions. But if you have the Lord as your top priority and you give him all your heart, you give him all your soul, you give him all your strength, you give him all your mind. And when it comes to a relationship, the Lord going to let you see that, brother, this is this is a street woman. You don't want a street woman. You don't want a, a somebody that be in the club all the time and uh, open up. You don't want a twerker. You don't want it. You don't want one of those women that think it's fashionable, but not to be uh, smoking uh, these uh, cigars. You all see them now. Some of these women think it's cute when they are. Uh, when you see them a lot on Facebook and stuff now, and you see them in person. Some of these women they go to sit to a cigar. Uh, Places. You know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. right? It's a lot of these sisters, and they think it's they think it's so quote unquote sexy to be smoking cigars and doing like this. They think it's so cool. Mm -mm. You got stanky breath doing all that with those cigars. That's what you got. You got stanky breath. But and then some of you brothers, this is what you need to understand. Those kind of women you don't want. You want a Proverb 30, 31 woman. She won't be perfect, but she will be right for you. Some of you brothers stop running after the counterfeit. Sometimes the counterfeit look real, but it's not. It's just like buying a car. The car might look good on the outside, but the car is not going to get you where you need to be. The body is not. What's more important is what's up under that hood. That's that motor. You need to check out the motor. But no, you like how the car look, right? No, nope, you have to check out the motor. That's the most important thing of the car. Yes, the body is important, but the motor is the heart of the car that keeps it going. <laughs> You understand? And then some of you sisters, we know you're emotional. You let the bad boy, you let Rico talk in your ears and have you smiling, right? But this good guy over here, this man got your back. You remember when you probably had to go to the, you remember when your car went down and, and uh, the bad boy, you called him and stuff and you said you need help, but he had something to do. He didn't have nothing to do. He was he was uh, drinking or playing PlayStation with one of his boys. He didn't want to mess up his Madden game. And you out there. But you called this other good guy, and he dropped whatever he had and came and changed your tire. As a matter of fact, you didn't even have a spare. He went and got and, and took he came and took the tire off your car went and got it repaired and came and put it back and then went on to doing whatever he wanted to do. He just wanted to make sure you was good. You married couple. There's some of you married couple that's running after your spouse. And this is something real crazy. There's some of you brothers. You running after other women besides your wife. You got a good wife. You got a good wife, brother. But no, you running after these good women, right? Your woman that's there with you, she is struggling, trying to find a reason to stay with you. And let me tell you some of you brother that running after other women what your wife going through. You got a wife that other men won't. So you married, bro, don't ever think you're going to get married to a woman and no, no other man don't want your wife for one reason or another. Some men might want your wife for recreation activities. 
And then you might have a few that really like your wife or character and stuff and really want her. And don't think, so, brother, when your wife go out there, you got a very attractive wife, other guys going to be in your wife's ear trying to talk to her. But she holding on to you while you running after these other women. And let me tell you what the other women going to do when you got a good wife. In just a moment, and when I say a moment, it can last for years and years, but this wife sticking with you. You messing with her head, you messing with her will and her heart. Some of you, bro, you just don't know. You at the brink of your wife blowing your, blowing your brains out. You treat the other women wrong. I mean, you treat your wife wrong. She know where you be at. She know where your car be at. She know you lie all the time. She know that you keep tabs on her. You want to keep all the tabs on her. And you want to tell her what she should do. and what she You, you should dress this way. You shouldn't do this and that. But yet you're a hypocrite. And you being with the other women. So this is what some of you brothers think. When your wife find out that you have cheated on her or something like that. This is what you do. She she forgave you, right? And when she forgave you, you say, oh, this is all we're going to happen. So you do it again. You do it again. You do it again. And at that point, your conscience be seared. And you just don't care nothing about it. But let me tell you this, brother. There's another man out there that really wants your wife. And you see, the dangerous part, and I always say it is, the dangerous part, if this other guy be able because you see what's going to happen you said you got a vulnerable wife but she still love you and I don't know why she love you and when I say that it's a lot of women that's in this because I do consultation and it's a lot of sisters like that they love some of you brother but I don't tell your wives to leave you I don't tell married people to leave one another I leave that to the individual but some of you brother you got some vulnerable wives. But I, I have helped some of you brothers out and you don't even know it. I have told some of your wives, don't be going around talking to other men and, and being isolated with other men. You know what I tell your wife this for, brother? Because I tell your wife this, I said, sister, you are vulnerable right now. And some of them think they, 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 some of them think they, they strong and stuff. I said, sister, you're not strong. Right now, you don't realize it, but this, your husband hurting you and you mess around and get isolated with another man. This man say something good to you. That man gaslight you and it might not be his good intent and you get and you be in worse trouble than you, you are with your husband. I said, don't be around no other men when you have a problem with your husband because you have a problem with your husband. We know that more than likely what you're going to do, you very vulnerable sisters, right? Yes, let him run after someone else. And when he runs after someone else, guess what? God is not going to continue to let you hurt like that. You understand? He's not going to continue to let you hurt like that. How you doing, Sister Dawn? And on the flip side, some of you brothers... You you got a wife that is not too up to par. You got a wife that's out there. She's out there. She don't care nothing about your reputation. She don't care nothing. She just out there. Everybody know what your wife doing. Everybody know. But you holding on. You holding on. You knew how she was before you married her. You know what they say. You know that saying about you could take the uh, girl out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the girl. That concept come from uh, the episode of Lot in the Bible, Abraham song. You are, you are familiar with the uh, Solomon Gomorrah story, right? You remember when Lot left out, the two angels pulled Lot and his uh, wife and his two daughters out? His wife looked back. That's where that term come from. You could take the, the girl out of the country, but you cannot take the country out of the girl. 
Some of the, those women that some of you brother, you thought you can make, uh, you know what, a housewife. That's what you thought. You thought you could mold her. No. And she was out there in the streets already. And you thought you could mold her. You can't mold no woman that's like that, brother. And now she's hurting you. She's hurting you. And she don't care nothing about you. She running all kinds of stuff on you. And it gets so bad. Some of you brothers, your wife is so disrespectful. She come home when she get ready. She running after other people. So when you, if you marry and you chasing, it's wrong. But let me tell you something. God is good. God is good. He's not going to continue to let you do it. But let me tell you this, my brother and sister. If you're married and your spouse is doing some, some questionable thing to you, it's, it's going to be hard. But don't hold on. Let them go. When I say let them go, I mean don't, don't let their behavior crush you. Let them keep doing what they're doing. Don't try to stop them. You can't stop. Stop trying to follow them. Start going out there fighting people and stuff like that. Don't do it. That's what he or she wants to do. Let me tell you this, uh, sister. If your man be with another woman, why you want to go fight that other woman? Why you want to do that? Brother, if your woman go be with another man, why you want to fight that other man? You marry sister when your husband doing stuff like that, run after other women. That's what something that he wants to do. Brother, when your woman out there doing stuff with other men, that's something that she wants to do. But payday is coming. It's a law called sowing and reaping. The Lord ain't no let nobody keep abusing you, but he may allow it for a while because he's trying to teach you a lesson. He's trying to teach you a lesson. You know why he's trying to teach you a lesson? Because a lot of you brothers and sisters... You get into a relationship because you follow your heart without going to God first. So now you got to pay the price because you did not do the, the right thing at the beginning. You trust it in your heart. You know how some men and women say, follow your heart. Don't ever follow your heart. That means your emotion that goes for you, brother. Don't ever follow your heart. The Bible says, and I think it's in Jeremiah, it say. The heart is wicked above all things. It even said that the heart is deceitful. Do you know, my brother and sister, that your heart can fool you? Did you? Do you realize that? Your own heart, your emotion can fool you. And that's what happened to a lot of you brothers and sisters. You, your heart, you get your heart invested in the wrong type of individual. You, you put those individual on a pedestal. And when you put the individual on a pedestal, you are... That's like an idol. The only person that's supposed to be on a pedestal is God. The only person that you really put your heart, all your heart, your mind and strength into is God. After that, it's your mate, which you are married to. That's why you have to be very, very careful, my brother and sister, like I'm saying. Why chase a person that doesn't want you? Why ignoring the person that wants you? Understanding, my brother and sister, all that uh, gold, where all that glitter is not gold. You might need to see up a metal. You can't get the gold metal all the time because sometimes the gold could be really tarnished. Have you all ever seen where some people could get real diamonds and stuff? They think they got a real diamond. You go to the jewelry store and you let that person in the jewelry store appraise it. And you don't have the real thing. You don't have the real thing. You thought you had the real thing. Somebody hoodwink you. Somebody bamboozing you. You thought you had the real thing, right? But you went to the jury store to get an appraisal. And that appraiser came and told you, you got something that worthless. But you thought you had it going on. That's how some of you brothers and some of you sisters do. When you run after the wrong man and the wrong woman, you think you got the real thing. And we ain't talking about coke. But you think about you, you got the wrong man or the wrong woman. But you know who the the very the person that should have you should have took the diamond to? You should have took it to God so he can evaluate it. And God would have told you whether or not that person is valuable or not to your life. You understand? God would have told you that. So my brother and sister, I'm about to leave you, but I got a good topic for you all tomorrow. And I know some of you probably saying, what you going to talk about tomorrow? Hey, I got something for you. But I hope that you all enjoyed this tonight. Lord willing, 
because the storm is still right here and i'm glad to god that it my i was able to broadcast before you my brothers and sisters okay let me tell you something my brothers and sisters. when i come on here i come on here to help you all because i love you brothers and i love you sisters something that i talk about i personally have walked down that road before if i haven't walked down that road before I know some men and women that have walked down that road before. You understand? So I'm here not for you to like me. I, I don't I don't tell people to like me and all that kind of stuff. I'm here because I love you, brothers. I love you, sister. When I say brother and sister, it go beyond the black race, okay? It go beyond the black race. I'm talking about every man and woman that is in Christ. The best relationship you can have, my brother and sister, is get you a relationship with God through his son, Jesus. First, that's the most important relationship you should get into before you get into a relationship with a man or woman. Get your relationship with God first. Remember, Adam had a unique relationship with God first, no Eve. And why God put Adam to sleep. How you doing, Sister Trace? And when uh, God put Adam to sleep, what did God do next? He had Eve. He got that rib and he formed Eve around it. And he had a unique relationship with Eve before she brought, before he represented the woman to Adam. So that's what you're supposed to do, my brother and sister. Have your relationship with God first. And then when God see fit in his time, he could bring you all together. He's not going to bring two perfect people together, brother and sister. There are no two perfect people. Brother, there are no perfect women. Sister, there are no perfect men. But God can bring the right people into a, a perfect relationship if he's in it. The perfect relationship you can have with God. And God can work through you, brother, and you, sister, to have a successful, strong relationship. Always remember that. And with that said, you all know what time it is. My boy, Genesis is about to take us out. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Peace out. Good night. You all have a good night.